You already know. See this motherfucker right, see? What up, family? We about to discuss some in-house racism today. Let me get a jam going and then let me get my cash app up here. Let me get that cash app up there, bro. Right. In-house racism is happening right now. In-house racism. Hey, man, Link, I'm on my way. Man, hit me, man. I'm gonna go hunting today. Gotta use these rifles. They finna take these rifles. They act like they love what they want to do. Can I get a jam stir going? I'm going to get me a jamster going. You already know. In-house racism. I want to talk about in-house racism. I ain't going to cuss. Y'all can share this if you want to. In-house racism is a bad man, Jack. See, see how I ain't cuss? In-house racism is a bad man, Jack. We racist toward our own people more than anybody. And I'm going to show you right now. And I don't have to use the election to show you. I'm going to show you how white people act and how black people act, how black people act towards white people. I said I hated up Barack Obama. Black people got more mad at me for liking Trump than hating a black guy or a so-called black guy. Can I get the damn going? Let's get a jam going. You know, I had a time of my life, you know, and I just couldn't figure out. Oh, I know, I know. I realized that I was having the time of my life. Oh, I And then it dawned on me. It was when I first love. Going with a jam, that's the clock sister. That's why I stood by the bridge. Because I knew you wanted me to. Fairy tales don't come true. Other people lie, lie, lie. Me and you, and I know you're feeling me from the first time. You love me right, and I can't deny. Believe in love at first sight. I've been praying hard all my life. I've been wishing on the star all my might. And for the first time in my life, everything is all alright. So we gon' take it up to a new height. If we ain't giving up, but we gon' fight. We ain't gon' stop till we get it right. Boy, you already know you the love of my life. Get closer to you, baby. Get closer than just friends. Get closer to you, baby Get closer than just friends Fairy tales don't come true For people like, like, like me and you And I know you're feeling me From the first time You love me right And I can't deny Boy, I don't wanna lose Baby 
TJ Godson. This message is basically saying blacks are inherently racist toward each other. It's an egregious behavior. Egregious behavior. It's just in us. Now, let's get into a message real quick. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to tie in polygamy. I'm trying to tie in a lot of stuff, but you're going to get it if you walk with me. Hey, Lynn. Lynn, can I get some cool water and a rag? Cold water in the rag. Now, understand this. The military is indicative of the elements. Earth, water, land, sea. You got the army and the fucking marines, land. You got the air force. You got the navy. You got the coast guard. You got different branches of the military, but they all coexist. Look at it like this. Your body is made up of a body. Then that body breaks down into a system. Those systems break down into organs. Those organs break down into cells. They break down into protons, neutrons, all that shit. So the United States military, you could have the army say we better. You could have the navy say we better. You could have the motherfucking marines say we better. You could have the coast guard say we better. But they all coexist. That military system exists. And it breaks down into several branches. But those branches break down into individual people. White people, black people, Mexicans, Latinos, whatever. Africans, whatever. Jamaicans. And the military is a system that works. It's like polygamy. It's like polyamory. It's like survival. You can't be racist or jealous in the military because everybody has to answer to a higher authority and you might be somewhere and you got to say, Skip, cover me. And the white guy is the one that cover you. You might have to say, Mexican, cover me. So although these people have individual mindsets and come from individual backgrounds, these people have something that has been trained and taught into their DNA to help each other and protect each other when it's time. That's what white people do. White people, white women vote for Joe Biden, although they love black women. Watch what I'm trying to say. The unity that the military have is not based on light, color, friendship, or anything. It's based on a common goal of survival. Black people should not be unified because of light, political party, anything other than a common goal of survival. We definitely shouldn't let other people involve themselves. I've seen some of the most hateful things. I believe in Donald Trump. I believe in Republicanism, but I don't give a fuck either way. But I've seen people say they not friends with people because of how they voted. White people never going to separate because how they voted. Because white people look, we unified in our whiteness. Oh shit, he Republican, I'm Democrat, I'm a crack, I'm a redneck. But you know what, regardless of who won the presidency, we wake up and we white. Now we might raise a little hell and piss, but we white. It's just like when they woke up and Barack Obama was president, they was like, well fuck it, you know, we still white. We still white. We should be staying, we still black, we still black. Black people have been duped with hope again because we are racist. We are racist towards anything or anything. How can I say this? Black people are so racist that we don't want to see nothing that happened to see black people do well. Watch this. Now let me give you my example. I told y'all. We are living life and experiencing through our senses. Some people hear Donald Trump won and it go into their ears and it get in their brain and fuck their life up. 
Some people hear Joe Biden on and go in their ears, fuck their life up. Some people see the polls. Some people, we're living life through our senses. And it's up to you to see that house as a raggedy house. It's up to you to see that house as a raggedy neighborhood. It's up to you to see them people as robbers, killers, and stealers. Why is it that black people can live in a neighborhood 50 years, black people avoid the neighborhood, drive by it, the second white people ride through the neighborhood and say, hey, look at these old, big-ass, dilapidated houses. We can turn this into a thriving white neighborhood. Why black people don't do that? More boy, Abby Einstein said something. Abby Einstein said he bought a house in a black neighborhood, refurnished it, fixed it up. His people, uh, his value went up. Now, what if everybody went and bought a house in that neighborhood. The question is, why don't black people gentrify their own neighborhood? Why don't middle class black people do to the hood what white people do? Because black people look at the hood and say, uh-uh, them niggas gonna rob me, steal from me, kill from me. So what's racism? Racism is holding yourself or a group of people down economically based on race. So black people hold our own selves down because we said we won't develop black neighborhoods. They'll rob me. White people look up and say, look, that's East Durham. Raggedy ass black neighborhood, they see potential. White people do shit like this. They believe in themselves. They believe in their product. They believe in their support. The Chinese people don't say, you know what, maybe black people might not buy our food. Chinese people set their shit up, believe in their product. They're not looking at the world racist, but they are racist. See, black people will act in racism, but won't set no business up. Meaning this. Chinese people hate black people, but they said we're not so racist that we won't set up a China man Chinese food in your community. I watch white people do this. The white people are coming to a black neighborhood and say, everybody loves donuts, right? Yeah. Well, I got an idea as a white person. I want to start a business. I seen this dilapidated old storefront in a black neighborhood. Everybody loves donuts. I don't care if the neighborhood is black, white, Mexican or what. Everyone loves donuts. I'm not even going to make donuts. I'm going to make the holes that's in the donut. And I'm going to take the holes that's in the donut and I'm going to squeeze some real vegan fruit into the holes. I'm going to squeeze some real vegan fruit into these donut holes. And they set up right in the middle of the hood. And black people be like, look at these motherfucking crackers. Me and don't we? Look at these motherfucking crackers. They just set up this little... Donut spot. Or they'll make some cheesy tater tots. They won't call them tater tots. They'll just call them white tots or cheese tots. And they'll set them up in the black neighborhood and black people be like, man, what is these crackers moving in here for? Ain't nobody gonna do that shit. Niggas gonna get robbed. Niggas gonna rob them. Two weeks later, the whole line around the store, crackheads walk around. And you had them motherfucking donut tots, man. Oh, man, they got that real vegan. Crackhead, what, what you mean? Yeah, man, I don't eat nothing but them vegan donut tops, man. My God, they good. What you mean? And then we'll brag. Y'all heard about that new donut spot? Y'all heard they ain't even donuts, man. It's just the holes in donuts. Y'all heard about them new tater tots? Before you know it, white folks from the other side of town done heard about it. They ain't scared to come to the black neighborhood. Now they buying donuts and tater tots in the black neighborhood. And the same folks that bought the goddamn store say, I'm going to build me a house. And black people will go by there and watch they call. Hey, white folk, I watch your house for you. Them white folks ain't racist. They not scared of black folks. They believe in social, they believe in capitalism. Oh, the real estate is cheaper. Durham is a fledgling place. Real estate cheap over here. All I want is something to cook my tater tots in. I live over here with these black folks. They ain't fucking with me. White folks know black folks is deaf scared of them. White folks will build a house in your black neighborhood or fix a house. They know good and goddamn well you ain't going to fuck with them, but you will rob your neighbor. A black man can't leave his lawnmower on the porch unchained. The white person leave the bike, the stroller, the lawnmower. Black person, go, hey, 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 how you doing? <coughs> Y'all know good and goddamn well black people look at the hood. Fuck that hood. I ain't going over there. Fuck them niggas. Fuck. We racist toward our own kind. 
And then these motherfuckers that have the ability to redevelop the hood or buy the houses and fix them or sit back soon as the white man buy them, they standing over here living in Briar Creek with the white man talking about, did you see my home? East Durham, my grandmother's house just got renovated. These crackers, now motherfucker, you scared. You are racist towards your own folks. You don't believe niggas will support you. I don't even see soul food restaurants in the black neighborhood because black people be like, I got a soul food restaurant. Let me go to let me go to Briar Creek. Let me go to Miami Boulevard where some white folks and some business folks uh, support me. Black folks say, hell no, man. It's about what you see, what goes into your eyes, what you hear. White folks going to stand together regardless. It's just like polygamy. I told you it's an egregious behavior. It's in you. It's in you to fuck. Like the military. Lynn and Chris are like the military. They like sergeants and the brigadier generals in my army. I give the orders out. How can they be jealous of each other when they trying their best to fill the orders out? Motherfucking captain in the military said, I need everybody in this platoon over that goddamn wall shooting them guns at them motherfuckers in two seconds. Now, man, they ain't got no time to argue. They got a mission. White folks ain't got no time to argue. They got a mission. Think about it. White folks created this system of republicanism. The republic, then you got Democrats and Republicans. They created this system, drew up a constitution and said, look, we going to go by these papers right here for the rest of our lifetime. And guess what? Ain't nobody going to change it. No matter how much we hate you, no matter how much I hate you, we're going to respect the office of the presidency. We're going to respect the office of the mayor. We're going to respect the office of governor. We're going to do our constitution and we're going to do it the right way. Donald Trump just bitching, raising a little hell, but he going to do shit the right way like everybody else. Black folks are start a chicken hut together and a break up. Black folks can't even stay in a fucking singing group together without breaking up. The white man said, look, I got a sheet of paper we going to create. We going to call it the U.S. Constitution. And they said us 50, 60 white men sitting in a room from different walks of life is going to draft a piece of paper that's going to run this country forever. We ain't going to never, ever, ever turn on each other like niggas are turning on each other over who's president. They done had 45 different white presidents and white folks ain't never turned on each other. Niggas done turned on each other. Racist. Mad at me because I like Trump. I have the right to express my opinion that I like Trump the same way you have the right to express your opinion that you like Biden. I never said anybody that vote Democrat, I'm going to not let them come to the cookout. I never said anybody that don't vote this, I'm not going to. We as black people are turning on family members. White people be like, look, the Constitution says this. I wanted this white guy to win. He didn't, but so what? We still white. Let's keep moving. Let's go over the Constitution. Black folks will sit back and we so racist, we don't want nothing until white folks want it. You've been driving past these houses in this black neighborhood. You've been driving. You could have been bought one of them houses and flipped it, but you didn't want it. You've been driving past your neighborhood, seeing your neighborhood fall off for the past 30, 40 years. Houses boarded up, but you didn't want it. You didn't have, your sisters couldn't see it. You didn't want it. You didn't want it. Them white folks said, I want to live in Durham, North Carolina. I don't care what the neighborhood like. I'm not afraid of black people. I'm not racist. They put Black Lives Matter up. They are so liberal. White folks know the second they flip one house in a black neighborhood, other white folks coming. Don't act like we ain't got the money to do it. We don't want to live near them niggas. 
we racist. We are holding our own people down because we don't want to live near niggas and do business near niggas. Do you understand a community starts with the neighborhood, the houses in the neighborhood, the value of the houses in the neighborhood and the quality of lives of people in the neighborhood affect the local school, it affects the tax, it affects how the senators, the fucking congressmen, it affects how the mayor, it affects how everybody sees you. So what we've done is had dilapidated black neighborhoods who the senators, the congress and the mayor has been looking over. That white people say, hey, we'll take these neighborhoods and build them up. And then a white neighborhoods that the Senate and the Congress saying, hey, change the lines. You got to goddamn redistrict this shit. This shit used to be a ragged ass neighborhood in South Memphis. Or all niggas in South Memphis. Them motherfucking crackers then moved in over there and them crackers live, it'd be one house built in a ragged ass neighborhood. Then before you know it, it's more houses. Before you know it, a Starbucks pop up and black people will start going to the Starbucks buying all that little food. Hey man, like I told you man, in the hood, them white folks had bought, built a little donut spot. I thought they was going to get robbed. Now I go up there every day, get me a donut. Crackhead walk out there eating donuts. Winos eating donuts. Everybody going from cross town to eat donuts. Now we posting pictures. Hey, man, I'm eating donuts at the white donut shop in the hood. Black folks could have done that, but we don't want to do it. We scatter each other. We don't trust each other. We know niggas. See, white folks don't know niggas. White folks only know niggas from what they see on TV. Somebody said, uh, Becky, you sure you're going to put a bakery in the middle of the black neighborhood? You know niggas how they are. They'll rob you. She said, oh, that's on TV. That's Boys in the Hood. That says TV. I'm not scared of no black peoples. Last thing a black man knows is he need to fuck with me as a white woman with a baker in this neighborhood. They will hang him Kill him, dig him up, electrocute his bones and burn his ashes and then throw him out to see if he fuck with me. Break down, who the hell is Javon Winters? Break down their comment. Look at what he said. It's not racist, it's understanding if you're in a place that's predominantly black, they would do anything to you, poison your water, etc. So if you want your kid to go to this school with resources, you have no choice but to move out the ghetto. I'ma fucking block you. You you got a fucking fake face. Get the fuck out of here. I just told the motherfucker you can turn the ghetto into a flourishing neighborhood just like the white folks can. Black folks would rather move to the lowest end of the white neighborhood than fix the black neighborhood. Me and my boy George bought a property in a black neighborhood. We trying to do exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Talking about Donald Trump, Joe Biden. We bought a property in a black neighborhood. And we fixing it up. And pretty soon we're going to be renting it out and I'm going to be on this bitch bragging, talking shit because we bought it four years ago and we've been working on it our goddamn selves. I'm going to be on this bitch bragging, talking shit, talking about, hey, Joe Biden, hey, Donald Trump, hey, guess what? This is what it's about. Gentrify your own fucking neighborhood. That's what we need to do. Sitting back, soon as the white person sees some value in some shit, we get mad. They tearing up our neighborhood. Man, you moved to the white neighborhood. You don't like that neighborhood. Want to live around white folks. I wouldn't dare want to live somewhere where I think if I'm jogging. You know what? Let me get my pistol in the neighborhood. I might take my pistol for some dogs or something, but not just sitting there. I'm jogging. I need my pistol to jog in my own fucking neighborhood. Black folks don't want to fix our own shit because we don't like each other, we don't trust each other, and we know each other. No, that's TV. Black folks ain't really like that. 
My friend Carol just bought a house in the middle of the hood and, 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 and fixed it, threw up a Black Lives Matter sign. Them black folks out there washing her gutters and cleaning her grass, walking her little baby to school for her. See, black folks go out of their way to show white folks they not evil the same way straight folks go out of their way to show gay folks that we not homophobic. I try to teach y'all something. Nobody listens to me. I'm going to go play another one of my wife's jams and Lynn's jams because I want to basically do this real quick. I want to get a cash app session going. Y'all hit that cash app. White folks go out of their way to show black folks, I like you with a Black Lives Matter sign. So black folks go out of their way and say, I'm not going to rob you by not fucking with their house. The same way black folks go out of the way to show other races that you got our back and we got yours. Of course you're people of color. I'm not racist. I'm black. I'm a Democrat. I love everybody. You are the Asiatic black man, China boy. Hey, uh, uh, Malaysian, you are Asiatic black man. Hey, Mexican, you are Asiatic black man. You are a person of color. Yes. The same way straight people go out of their way to show gay people I ain't homophobic. Every time I, uh, I got a gay friend on Facebook, just so Facebook can't see I'm homophobic. If, if Facebook see my gay friend Aaron come up on my timeline, he on there with his ass out or doing some old gay shit on the timeline, Facebook said, what is Javon friends with this gay guy for? He ain't homophobic. I ain't been to jail in a long time since I started sharing Aaron's gay shit. Y'all think I'm bullshitting. I share that gay shit Aaron posting them gay videos and shit. I ain't been to jail. They ain't letting y'all see the gay shit I share because they don't want y'all to stop fucking with me because I shared the gay shit. But I'm smart. I done figured this shit out. They judge about what you share and what you don't share. You ain't sharing enough gay shit. Soon as I shared that gay shit, y'all been seeing me every day. I ain't been in no Facebook jail. I been chilling. On here asking for my cash out. Chilling. I ain't been in jail. Every other time, y'all ain't never seen me on this motherfucker this long. You got to share some gay shit now. You got to learn. A gay motherfucker walk in the room, first thing I do. How you doing, gay guy? I'm Javon Clark, stiff handshake, just so you know I'm not homophobic. That's what we do. We go all out. We'll go all out to show how much we love Biden just to show that we hate Trump. I love Biden. My man was over here. We was chilling. He said, you didn't vote. You're a disgrace to your people. You shouldn't even talk about politics if you don't vote. I said, well, what did you vote for Biden for? He said, I just wanted to get Trump out of there. Oh, good God almighty. So you wanted to show the world you a Democrat so bad so won't nobody think that you're a Republican. Black person, black folks, whether you know it or not, you are very Republican and very conservative. Let me tell you why. Because the average black person, they ain't going to give you shit. Let me tell you how racist black folks is. I came on Facebook. I said, if you got an LLC, if you got a business... Yeah, Aaron Tanell Austin and Aaron French. I, look, you don't go to jail either. You share and some of Aaron's shit, you won't go to jail. Now listen, I came on Facebook. I said, Trump about to give us the bag. If you got an LLC, if you're black, you should have been a had an LLC, no matter what. Just, just because. If you're black, you could have got a PPP loan. You could have got unemployment. So many things. I told people how to do it. I said, I'm going to go get this unemployment. Somebody said to me, oh, man, that's welfare. You living off the government. That's my taxes. I said, no, brother, I pay taxes too. But the thing I'm saying, black people so racist, we look down on the welfare rack. Oh, she getting food stamps. My taxes go to her food stamps. The government give a hard-working black person who been working his whole life unemployment. You should have did this with your 600 unemployment. Mad at everything. Golly. Mad at the food stamp chick. Mad at me for getting unemployment. Mad at LeBron James for being a millionaire. Mad at who you vote for. God damn. We racist as a motherfucker. 
I don't, I mean, I tell you, fuck them low lives. That's, that's my number one saying. Fuck them low life motherfuckers. I ain't got nothing for them no more. I was trying to start a school. I actually started a school. I had a community center, everything. Motherfuckers wouldn't show up. I can't hate everybody from top to bottom. I hate low life motherfuckers. I like black people that's working hard, trying to, God damn, you don't want them to get minimum wage either? Them low life motherfuckers, they poor. They now, now we gonna give them $15. Oh, hell no, nah, don't no motherfucker need to get no $15 to work at no motherfucking McDonald's. God damn. You don't want your fella brother to get paid more? Shit. We racist. We hold our each other down economically. I ain't put no rest business in no black neighborhood. I ain't finna flip no house in no black neighborhood. That's what we do. Mad at each other. We just held down each other based on two white men. See, black folks will believe the white liberal democratic media so much that we really, really live on this shit. I seen my boy IB share some shit today, right? The congresswoman from Florida. This is what the congresswoman from Florida said. She said black 90% of black women voted for Joe Biden. That means they love everybody. This lady is a congresswoman. She's intelligent. She got some sense. 90% of black women voted for Joe Biden. That means black women love everybody. She said the black women, black men that voted for Donald Trump hate black women. Because I voted for Donald Trump, I hate black women. I didn't vote either way. The person that don't vote don't give a fuck. That's the black mother mentality. She said, if you vote for Donald, vote for Joe Biden, you love everyone. Why should you love everyone? Why wouldn't you vote for the person who's going to make your life better? You are black. You are a conservative. As a black person, you wish it was more parents in the neighborhood. Black folks don't like all that gay shit. We, black folks don't believe in that transgender shit. Black folks don't believe in that goddamn kids can pick their sex shit. Black folks don't believe in all that shit. Black folks is conservative, chill, card playing, spades playing, Pepsi drinking motherfuckers. Black folks believe in guns. Black folks will sit back, live in a neighborhood, and break their neck to move. I saved my money to get out of East Durham. I saved my money to get out of East Durham. Bought me a house in the low white neighborhood. Rolled back through East Durham. White folks then bought them houses and made them bigger. Now I wish I lived back over there with white folks. I just want to be where the white folks at. I don't care how it affects my racist economy. I want to be where the white folks at. What's this? Donut shop?
Yeah, I used to live downtown, then I moved back over here, then I moved back over here. What are you doing? I'm just, I'm just trying to stay closest to the white folks, man. I'm trying to stay close to the white folks, man. White folks practice polygamy and polyamory the same way the military practices polygamy and polyamory. What do you mean? I'm not talking about fucking. I'm talking about the interconnectedness, the interdependency amongst each other to continue to make the organism work. My big toe can start hurting. My big toe said, God damn it, I'm weak. Them other four toes have said, lean on us, baby, because we can't stop walking. Lean on us because we can't stop walking. We have to understand that our race is like a body and our race is made up of systems, organs, down to tissue. My motherfucking pancreas could be not secreting enough insulin. And that shit will make my motherfucking kidneys shut down. They don't fight in war amongst each other. We sit back and we mad at who's president. And we black. They sit back. They say what they is. I'm a redneck proud of it. Well, I'm a card-carrying gay white person. But we can do business with each other. I'm a lesbian, liberal, carpet-munching white girl. And I'm a redneck son of a bitch from Georgia. So what's up with the contract? Girl, I tell you, you sure know how to make some cakes. My daughter, she like your cakes. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I'm on with that gay stuff, but you a cake baker, some bitch. Oh, I ain't mean to call you some bitch. Oh, where, where, you, what you mean? And she be like, give me your motherfucking money. We looking for an opportunity to get away from black folks. Let me get another black jam on. I want to show y'all and we going to delve back into how we break our necks to show home show gay people we not homophobic. It's how we break our necks to show white people that we ain't runaway slaves. Watch this. Let me go into the clock sisters. What we going to do? Lego
if you ain't never thrown a fit. You ain't never had no dick if you ain't never thrown a fit. No fits on this, fits on this. I'm a dope fits on this, fits on this. I'm a dope fits on this, fits on this. I'm a dope fits on this, fits on this. Never had no dick if he never thrown a fit. He never had no dick if he never thrown a fit. I'm gonna fuck you, I suggest I let you know. I'm a bottle, I'm a opponent, and I'm gonna leave you trolling. He never had no dick if he never thrown a fit. He never had no dick if he never thrown a fit. If I'm gonna fuck you, I suggest I let you know. I'm a bottle, I'm a opponent, and I'm gonna leave you trolling. See, that's what capitalism is. Capitalism is say, Javon, you could get on your computer, make some music, and sell it. Capitalism and republicanism says, Javon, you could get on your phone on this internet, and if these people like you enough, they'll send you a cash app because you entertain them. You help them start their day. There's a way. See, that's what white people understand. There's a way. There's always a way. Certain people are going to wait. Certain people are going to wait. You got two things. You have the workers and the waiters. The workers are going to create a way for themselves. Those are the Republicans. Those are the business owners. Those are the people who got a skill, a trade. The waiters are Democrats. The waiters are people that are going to say, well, when is the fucking Ford plant coming to my town? When is the welfare check coming? You have workers and waiters. I'm a worker. And I work in my own way. My knowledge is my income. My knowledge is my income. My podcast is about to be starting soon. That's going to blow. I'm not banking my podcast off these 87 people watching it on here that like it. Some people, a waiter is so content with 89 people. I get on Facebook, I see sometimes, I see people with four, five people on the live. And they talking their motherfucking head off. Me, a classroom is 10 people. I see myself as teaching. I don't see myself as entertaining. I'm an edutainer. I will educate you while I'm entertaining you. But I see myself as teaching you. So I'm sitting back and I'm like, I'm a worker. I'm not a waiter. I started my detox, I started my vegan meal prep, I cater, somehow I produce beats, somehow I'm going to make a dollar. I'm not a waiter, I can't wait. Now, if somebody say, hey, you can get some unemployment and you got a business and you ain't catering as much, oh, that, now that's, that's a lick. That's a lick. Workers say, hey, look at this fucked up neighborhood. I'm finna buy these houses, flip them, and sell them to white folks. White folks gonna buy them. And it's white folks that are workers. Black folks waiting. When is they gonna come through and fix the projects? When are they gonna come through and fix our neighborhood? I seen some goddamn Latinos when they first moved into these projects up here by Rochelle Manor. The fucking parking lots was full of goddamn holes and shit. They went out there and put concrete and patched their own fucking holes up in the parking lot. The Mexicans patched their own fucking potholes up in their fucking parking lot. I watched the motherfuckers do that shit. I, it's, it's, it's either you a worker or a waiter. And the waiters are always going to be racist. Waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. You're racist towards your own people because you're waiting on a handout. So you're looking at who's going to get my handout? you going to get my handout? I don't like you. I don't like you. Let's get that daycare voucher. Let's, 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 let's wait until the fucking prison Start treating people better instead of raising our kids to not go to prison. Let's wait until the cops stop beating motherfuckers ass until we raise our kids how to not to break the law and how to interact. Let's wait until white folks be nice instead of working to get our own. Yeah, Joe Biden gonna be nicer. God damn it, couldn't get no nicer when Obama was in office. 
That's that black mother, single mother mentality. Let's wait on black men to start fathering their kids. Let's wait on black men to pull out. Now, baby, we're going to stop waiting on black men to get smart enough to pull out. We're going to start making them strap up. We're going to start using a diaphragm. We're going to start getting us a morning after pill. Let's stop waiting on a nigga to pull out. Black men, let's stop waiting on that girl to have an abortion. Come in and wait on her. What you going to do? I come to them. What's happening? I'm just waiting. I fucked her raw. What you going to do? I'm just waiting. I'm going to wait. I'm going to just wait. Let me see how long it takes. If my dick ain't dripping, I feel like I can go fuck something else. Let me wait. You don't call or ask or nothing. You know, hey, you know we had raw sex. Did your prayer come up? You know, get ahead of it. Just wait. I'm pregnant. What you gonna do? She tell you she's pregnant. You don't go to no doctor visits with her nothing. You just wait for the baby to come and wait to see what it look. And now she's sitting back waiting and wondering if you're gonna be a daddy. And he not. I found out I'm six weeks pregnant. Oh, for real? Yeah, I came and you wrong. Oh, you my girl, I've been fucking with you. My first doctor visit is it's in a week. You want to come with me? No. Okay, I know what to do when I go to the doctor. You don't want to come with me to the doctor to see the little ultrasound, little heartbeat? <laughs> you ain't happy to have no baby. You ain't proud. Well, I'm going to just wait. Oh, the third month. Fourth month. Fifth month. Now I'm in here having a baby cut out of my stomach by myself. Now I'm going to wait and see what he do. Now I got a baby out here in the world. This nigga don't want to do nothing. The baby said, can I at least see my father? Well, I'm going to wait. Take the baby to see his daddy. Supervise the visit. Hey, look, your daughter want to see you. Me and you had our whatever, but check this out. I want her to see you. I'm a woman. I was younger, but I'm stronger now. I want my child to see you. I'm working on it. I'm independent, whatever. I'm handling it by myself. I got a new nigga. I'm doing what I need to do. But I want her to know you. I want her to know you because she or he wants to know you. I don't care about your financial situation. I don't care what you have. I don't care who you're dating. I don't care who you with. I want to see my child smile from seeing you. I want my child to know his or her daddy. I don't care about your situation. I don't care that you don't have this. You don't have to buy that. I don't care. And that's what men need to do. Go to their fucking uh but I'd have heard I'd have heard niggas say, yeah, man. One day that kid gonna see, that kid gonna know how mean she is. That kid gonna come. So what you gonna wait till your daughter turn 25 and come find you and then be like, daddy, daddy, daddy. Don't wait, man. Call that woman up, Keisha. You had the baby cut out of you at the hospital on a cold table. I won't there. I waited. I was a waiter. I did not come to the house to see the baby. I looked at the baby on Facebook. I waited till the baby got a certain age. Then I couldn't deny the baby was mine and I kept waiting. But look, check this out. All that other shit, it's in the past. I want to see and be in the child life in any capacity that you will allow. Now look, you know me. This is what I got. I'm going to give you what I have to help. You know me. You fucked me. You let me skeet in you. You know my life. You know I'm a petty and ass weed dealer. You know I work over here. You know I sell big dope. I'm going to give you what's feasible. You know me. And I don't care. I will give you this without you letting me see the child for however long I need to for you to see that I'm real this time. I know you don't think I'm real. All I got is $100 a week. I want to see my baby, but I don't expect you to just break down for no $100 a week. I'm going to shoot you this $100 a week until you see that I'm serious. Because I know you know me. I know you know I don't do what I say I'm going to do. 
I never did what I say I'm going to do in our relationship. So I wouldn't expect you to trust me. I'm going to do something to prove to you that I have some discipline and some consistency and some love and concern about this child. And I don't care how long. All I got is $15. But guess what? I'm going to show up every Friday with this $15 and smile and tell you I appreciate you for what you're doing for my child until you say, you know what, this nigga serious. We more racist toward Trump and Biden than we are our own baby daddy and baby mama. I know motherfuckers is more on Trump or Biden side than they own a baby daddy or baby mama side. Be for your baby daddy as much as you are for Biden and Kamala Harris. Be for your baby mama as much as you are for Biden and Kamala Harris. Ain't nothing bigger than the scope of your influence. You can fix everything by changing the influence. If we are a black nation, a black race, a black community, you break that down for black nation, black race, to black community, to black neighborhood, to black mom and daddy, to black who gon' fuck who after the club. That's what we're broken down into. We are race, a community, a neighborhood, a household, who fucking in the back. Because, and it trickles up. You fucking in the back room leaves a kid going out into the neighborhood, to the community, and it becomes a member of the black race. So your kid is directly going to affect how we are seen as a whole. We got too many motherfuckers fucking in the back room, not even maintaining a household together. We just fuck. We need to fuck and now co-parent. That turns into a neighborhood. The neighborhood is based on us saying, let's keep this for us. I don't understand how black people can allow white people to give them a section of town to live in. They don't keep it clean. They throw bottles on the ground. They throw trash on the ground. They act like a goddamn fool. They shoot up the neighborhoods. They rob, steal, and rape and kill each other. And then it gets to the point where nobody wants to live there. And the only people that's still there is the people that ain't got no, no other way out. One day, they are going to gentrify Flint, Michigan. Because the people that's left in Flint had no other way to get themselves to fresh drinking water. But Flint, Michigan is a city with property and things. See, the white man could say, let's poison the water. And we're supposed to say, the water poison. Had to get the fuck out of there, Jack. We say the water's poison. But I'm waiting on somebody to fix it. Man, the water poison. I'm waiting on someone to bring me some trucks of water. See, sometimes you have to say the things that hurts some motherfuckers' feelings. Understand, we have to say things because, like I said, people turn into neighborhoods, to communities, to the race. So sometimes we need to address people individually. People. Hey, sister. Hey, brother. You made that. This is a situation we need to address a community. People in Flint, Michigan. What is going on? Where did you make a mistake in life? What is up with you? What's the deal with y'all? This is addressing a city. Now we have to address a state. Hey, the state of, we might have to address the nation of us from now. 
So the example I'm using is not saying that I hate anyone. I'm using an example saying we will wait on clean drinking water. The cow said, man, why are the cows leaving? On the farm. I grew up on the farm. Cows ain't down at the water. What the fuck going on? They started. The animal's mouth get to slobbing. My granddaddy know. Some in the water. Get in the truck. Ride down to the pond. Ride upstream just to show us hell. Something died in that goddamn water. Them animals said, we not drinking this contaminated water. Even the beavers are run out and said, look, we beavers, we do this in nature. We'll cut down the goddamn trees and let it fall in front of the dead animal in the water. So the water jam up back here. And then the water create its own new river and tributary. Nature is created, your rivers and dam systems is created by animals, beavers saying, we don't want that. We don't drink that. We don't drink that. Right now, right now, right now, there are communities that black people live in that black people could fix and make them fledgling black communities. Not only do they create fledgling black communities, they create an infrastructure. Because when you got a black community, you have black dollars intercirculating. You have black stores. You understand? We ain't got to have it all. It start with the house next door. It start with homes. The second white folks put one white house in that fucked up neighborhood. It's a coffee shop coming. Businesses will cater to black folks in good neighborhoods because black folks used to do it to each other. How the fuck do you think that shit can go from the roughest, toughest, rudeness, pootiness black neighborhood to an all-white neighborhood with dogs leaving the beaver and strollers running down the street? Because white folks were not afraid to invest money in a place where black folks were. They were not racist. They actually are not racist. Those white folks that move into these black neighborhoods are lesbians, gays, liberal thinking, white Americans. I'm not afraid of a black person. I'm liberal, I'm gay, I've been uh, oppressed. I don't believe that I'll be robbed just because it's a black neighborhood. I, don't, I believe black people will buy my pizzas and my coffees and my bagels and my danishes. I don't believe that black people are animals. I, don't, I just don't believe that black people are going to come shoot up my house. And black people are telling them, you do know you're moving to a black neighborhood, right? Huh? You do know. And they be like, what do you mean? Uh... They look at you like, this motherfucker is racist against his own people. This motherfucker, I'm not afraid of no cracker. They say, I'm not afraid of black people. Black person moving to the city, first thing he do, he go buy, rent him an apartment in a gated white community. White person moving from Silicon Valley to Durham, North Carolina. Let me buy me a, a house for 60 grand in the black neighborhood and flip it and now it's worth 300,000. Black person moving with less money. Let me go see, can I stay in the, uh, the best apartment complex with the, uh, the weight room and the pool with, with downtown? Ain't that what we do, child? out? Look at them, Tada. Ain't that what we do, Tada? Mm -hmm. That what we do? 
I'm looking for the best apartments this side of town. Yes, I want to have the key fobs in the gym. That's what we do. Can anybody tell me yes or no before I play the next song and get out of here? Do you live near a place that was all blacks and blacks didn't want that shit and white folks fixed it up? Now it looked all white and black folks mad. Yes or no? Let's get into the clock, sisters. I need you. Let's go get it. Chris Clark, Sonny Lynn. You know, I get tongue tied sometimes. And I just can't find the right words. Or I just don't want to say what it really is. But this time, I'm going to spit it like this. Oh. I need you, baby. I need you, baby. Come see me, baby. Don't tease me, baby. I need you, 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 I need you. I got a spot. I know a lot. Come go with me. Come see me. I need you, 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 I need you. To say we don't like R. Kelly. We don't like R. Kelly no more. Black people will wait to the last minute and start crying. Ah, why they asking for IDs to vote? Why you ain't had no goddamn ID anyway, bitch? Do you cast a check? You don't even got a fucking ID, man. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Why don't we go into these neighborhoods, fix these houses up? Because we are racist. And they say racism is about money. Well, if you hate or are afraid or scared that niggas going to rob you based on the fact because they black, You fucking with your money. Who gon' who gonna buy something from you first? The nigga that's your color, cause he know what you got. I don't be knowing what them Mediterranean folks got in them restaurants. I don't know what them shaxi cool, all that shit is. A nigga be more curious to try some shit he ain't never heard of. You want some shaxi slice, slice soup? What's that? Girl, I'm down here at the damn Chinese spot. They just opened up in the black neighborhood. They got that shit you slice, you slice, you shoot. Nigga be like, let me go get some shit you slice, slice, you see, soup. And it's some goddamn fried chicken and green beans and fried fish right there around the corner. He don't want that shit. He'll try some shit he ain't never ate. He'll eat some snails so he eats some collard greens so he can support another motherfucker so he can look like it. It don't even cool to, to show no nigga shit. Ain't no, it ain't cool to show no nigga shit. I'm affirmed. I'm affirmed. You know that's racist? If you like Nike above the black product, that's racism. 
You hurting your own racist pockets because you like they, they shit. You know them white folks and them Italians is behind that shit. We're going to jam on out of here, man. How we going to jam out of here? Man, I'm finna go hunting, man. Cause them white folks is wanting to take them guns. I'm finna go go hunting. If you ain't never shot nothing and killed nothing, it's a different story to be sitting there waiting with bated breath to blow some goddamn head off. Woo! We gonna get out of here. We appreciate y'all. We thank y'all. We love y'all. We love y'all more than anything. And we hope that you continue to love us. Treat yourself well. Don't hate your brother because of who president. Because y'all know how everything is. Whether it's the OJ case, whether it's the R. Kelly case, whether it's the NBA finals, the Super Bowl, or whether it's the presidential election. Black folks love to be against each other and argue until the next hot thing comes along. Black folks love this. If, the, if we'd have known Joe Biden or Trump was president the next day, we our fun will be over. It's fun as hell waiting these three days, looking at these memes, seeing what somebody going to say. This is the fun as hell. Y'all know black folks, we love drama because we the product of single mothers. We love drama. The motherfucking presidential election, Trump is the winner. Oh, man, that's fucked up, fucked up. We got one day of talking shit. Biden the winner. We don't got but one day of talking shit. Now we talking shit, posting memes. I'm sitting back waiting on Trump to do some crooked white folk shit and not leave the White House. That, that way it'll be, I'll be extra happy. I told you motherfuckers that crooked white folks is crooked white folks. Why do I care? Crooked white folks. Let's get out of here, man, because I'm living my own life and I got to do what?